Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto had RPG gamer ability. Uzumaki Naruto wakes up one day to find out that his life has been turned into a RPG game, thanks to his gamer ability. What should he do about this? Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 21. The Real Genin Test CL Room. Kanahagakur Shinobi Academy Naruto was whistling a jaunty tune to himself as he made his way back to the CL Room. Behind him, his new teammates were breathing heavily from trying to keep up with the energetic little stamina freak. While her training with Naruto had greatly improved her stamina over the past few months, Sakura was still only barely above the base needed to count it as genin level. And Ano's own training and competitive nature had allowed her to keep up with her frenemy, if only barely. Seriously Naruto how much energy do you have? The Yamanaka heiress hissed out as Naruto paused to let them catch up at the room's door. She wasn't used to quick marching in order to keep up with someone who was the same age as her. More than you and Sakura-chan put together, Ino. The blonde boy swow back with a toothy grin. Uruka sensei doesn't call me a stamina nut for nothing. Sensei's right about that. The pinket offered with a huff. Naruto can outlast me in a spar without even breathing hard. I still don't know how the heck he manages that. She finished, tossing a glare at her new teammate. It was kind of frustrating, no matter how hard she trained. Sakura would always be close to collapsing before Naruto even started to look winded. It's cuz I'm just that awesome, Sakura-chan. Naruto said with a definite smirk. Ignoring the almost synchronized scoffs from the two kunoichi, the last Uzumaki sat in his old seat for what he guessed would be the last time and settled in to wait for his sensei to arrive. Ino and Sakura reluctantly slid into place on either side of him and did the same. So do either of you know Sarutobi-sensei? Ino asked after a couple of minutes. Yeah, he lives at my building. Naruto nodded. He's a kick teacher. He's taught me more about wind jutsu than I've learned in the academy. With him teaching us, we'll be strong before you know it Dadbeo. Wait, I've heard that name before I sent he a former member of the Guardian Shinobi 12. The personal bodyguards of the fire daimyo himself. Sakura asked with wide eyes. Yup. He doesn't really talk about it much, though. The blonde boy nodded in agreement, having heard that from the man once or twice. Still, he should be able to teach us a lot about being a bodyguard from personal experience, right? Both of the girls nodded thoughtfully. Bodyguard duty wasn't an uncommon job for Shinobi, and someone who had acted as a bodyguard to the ruler of Hai no Kuni for over a decade would very likely know more than a few tricks of the trade that would make them very much useful in that department. In the next few minutes, various teams trotted out of the CL room as John and Sensei AR arrived to cart them away. The lady who picked up Team 8 was an interesting one in Naruto's opinion. She wore an outfit that looked as if she had raided a temple and d-bad herself in paper sutras, and her raven black hair contrasted nicely with her crimson red eyes and pale skin. Yuhi Kuranai LV. Genjutsu mistress of Konoha, now that was someone Naruto never wanted to fight. Genjutsu were a tremendous weakness of his, even with the protections that the gamer's mind granted him. All that gamer's mind did was prevent him from being terrified or paralyzed with fear from Genjutsu, it did nothing to stop him being trapped in illusory Genjutsu. He could still be locked in an inescapable labyrinth of an illusion and thus easily removed from a fight. Could having the QB sealed inside me have anything to do with my weakness to Genjutsu, he wondered absently. He remembered one lesson mentioning that there were legends from the Warring Clans era about the nine-tailed fox being controlled via illusions. Yo, Team 10. Asuma's deep voice sounded from the doorway. Naruto looked up quickly to see the man smirking at him. Follow me. The three genin scrambled out of the room, leaving Sasuke, Kiba, Akamaru and Shino alone as the only genin in the room. So, anyone have a pack of cards? Kiba asked after a moment. With the new Team 10 Yakiniku Q, Kanahagakur, wow this place is pretty cool. Naruto said looking around the room they were in. It had a large grill, which was already cooking some salted beef tongue on it. Never been here before, Naruto. Asuma asked. The man was busy cooking the food, but glanced up to eye his students every now and again. Nah ah. 
never tried to cook barbecue before and I didn't want to waste what little money I had on food I would probably burn. The boy admitted. He was certain that with his level 25 cooking skill, he could handle it now though. Asuma chuckled slightly at that. Fair point, the grills can be tricky for a beginner. I'll show you a few tricks at some point. Once you get the hang of it though, you'll be a regular here, I guarantee it. Ino eyed the meat hungrily. Although she'd enjoyed a veggie ramen at Aikiratu's which she'd admit was surprisingly good, she still had enough room for more thanks to her discontinuation of her dieting. And the meat here did smell delicious. Sakura swallowed hungrily as she eyed the meat herself. While salted bull tongue wasn't her favorite meat, it was still Yakiniku Q's best known dish and she rarely ate out, mostly due to the fact that her mother wasn't the type to eat out when it was less expensive to cook from home unless she simply didn't have the time or it was a special occasion. So then, while we wait for the meat to finish, Asuma said with a smile. It's time to talk about the genin exam you're about to take. Um didn't we just take the genin exam, Asuma sensei? Sakura asked in confusion. Kinda yes, kinda no. The bearded man replied as he absently started effing a few piece of meat over. Yes, you took the academy genin exam, but that was simply to clear out those who were clearly incapable of becoming shinobi in the first place. Those of you who have ped the academy test have proven to have the bare minimum amount of knowledge and skill to become shinobi. Now you, and your CLMates, have to pee the Jonin sensei exam, which varies from sensei to sensei. About three quarters of you will fail it and be sent back, no thanks to how badly the academy's standards have fallen in recent years. You've probably already heard all about that from your Chunin sensei. Anyway, once we've eaten our fill here, we'll head to a training field and you'll demonstrate your skills before all three of you spar against me at once. Land a solid blow on me inside of a time limit and you pee, fail to do that and you go back to the academy. Simple as that. E-H-H. Naruto's eyes bugged out. Man, talk about a high hurdle. Even all three of us put together aren't a match for you. Easy there kid, I'm not going to be going all out. Asuma chuckled before roaring the blonde Jinchuriki and the now uneasy girls. That would completely go against the purpose of the test. Yes, I could beat all three of you with one hand tied behind me if I wanted to. So what? I'm a Jonin and you three aren't even recognized Jenin yet. Unless you had several hours to prep an area with traps for an ambush and I was stupid and why enough to walk right into it, there's absolutely no way for you to win against me. What I want to see is if you can come up with a plan to fulfill an objective and then execute it properly. The purpose of the demonstration isn't for me, it's for your teammates so they know what you are capable of. Knowing the skills of your teammates is absolutely essential if you want to make a plan, especially against a stronger enemy. The three genin absorbed that for a moment, and then exchanged looks with one another. No matter how they stacked the odds in their favor, a jonin was so far above them in every category that even landing a single blow seemed to be a coin toss at best. I'll keep myself to the strength of the average chunin, with no jutsu above C rank or my trench knives. Asuma continued as he served up the plates with meat, adding in the veggies that he'd been cooking on the side too. It helps that thanks to my stint with the 12, I'm more than a bit rusty. A. Sakura tilted her head to the side in curiosity. The Guardian Shinobi 12 or the Fire Daimyo's personal guard, Sakura. We have to be on guard almost all the time, and there are only 12 of us. The bearded Jonin chuckled. Even with us working in shifts, that doesn't exactly leave as much time for training as we might like, and I was a member for over a decade. As much as I'd like to think I haven't gotten weaker from all of that standing around and reduced training time, I likely have. One reason why I decided to take a genin team is that it lets me ease into the life of a regular genin again and rebuild my strength back up to its former level without too much HLE. Makes sense. Eno nodded. Didn't you have an interview with daddy a couple of months ago too? Mandatory counseling after an extended deployment outside of Konoha. Asuma agreed. Thanks to the Yamanaka clan, our shinobi forces generally speaking have the best mental health in the elemental nations. There are outliers, but we're all in better shape, mentally speaking, thanks to the Yamanaka. Ino looked smug at that. Now tuck in. We have a lot to do today and you need to eat to keep your energy up. Asuma urged them. Not needing any further urging, the three genin fell upon the barbecue with a gusto. It impressed Asuma how Naruto could eat more food after visiting his favorite ramen eatery, but chalked it up to his Uzumaki heritage. 
Kashina had been a big eater as well, from what his dad had said. His eyes lingered on the sole male genin for a moment. What his father had told him was utterly ridiculous, a fairy tale practically but Sarutobi Hirazan didn't joke about the abilities of the ninja under his command, especially when it came to one Uzumaki Naruto. If the kid really has got some kind of RPG power, then it would explain how he's managed to do a complete 180 from dead last to capable student this year. Asuma mused as he started on his own meal. It would also explain how he learns jutsu so fast as well. This will be interesting, if nothing else. Later training field 10. Kanahagakur outskirts, quest alert. The true genin exam, your Janin sensei, Serutobi Asuma, has revealed that you and your teammates are going to be tested by him to see if you truly deserve the hit I ate that you wear. In order to pee your team must land a single solid blow against him, whether it be ninjutsu or taijutsu, within a specified time limit. Quest reward. Confirmation of Genin rank, 7500 EXP, 10,000 Ryo, 2 random jutsu scrolls. Quest failure, demotion back to academy student. This quest cannot be refused and has thus been auto-accepted. Naruto eyed the pop-up and resisted the urge to frown. After three years, he had graduated at long last. He was not going to fail this test. Like hell he was going to go back to being an academy student after all of this. He leaned back against a tree and glanced around the training ground. It wasn't anything special, at least compared to the chakra-saturated training ground that he frequented. The place was basically a clearing in the middle of a lightly forested area, with a path leading through the trees to the entrance of the training ground. In the clearing itself, which was larger than the entire academy sparring ground, Asuma and Ino were watching with interest as Sakura made a sujoki bunch and using the materials that she'd brought with her in scrolls. I have to say, I haven't seen someone use a sujoki bunshin in a good while. Asuma commented appreciatively. Shame, as it's a heck of a lot more useful than the standard bunshin. You know any Sweden ninjutsu to go along with it, Sakura. A couple of low-rank techniques that my father taught me, but just supplementary ones. The Pinket admitted. One to increase the amount of water vapor in the air by taking it from water nearby, and one that keeps too much water vapor away from my hair. Frizzy hair protection. Eno nodded sagely. Quote dot. Something to work on later. The bearded Jonan mused. A lot of powerful Sweden techniques are chakra intensive if they have to create water from scratch, but the more water in the area to draw upon, the lower the cost in chakra. If you're on a lake or close by the coast, the main cost of a Sweden jutsu is in manipulating the pre-existing water. Isn't that for people with a strong Sweden affinity? Naruto asked. Mostly, but someone with a lot of practice and talent can do it as well. Asuma explained. Hokage-sama trained himself to the point that he can use Sweden, Raiden and Futon just as easily as his natural Kaden and Doden affinities. It's one reason why he's called the professor. Of course, trying to emulate my Oyaji is impossible for most people, otherwise elemental affinities wouldn't matter other than to catalog the types of jutsu. The best that most people manage when they put the effort into it are three elemental affinities, plus middling competency in a fourth. I stick to my futon and Kaden affinities as a matter of preference. Naruto watched as Ino gave a demonstration of her own skills, which were, rather surprisingly, less than Sakura's own. Aside from the Academy 3 and Traveling 10, the only unique jutsu that she had were the basic Shintenshin no jutsu, the staple technique of the Yamanaka clan as well as what she called the Sabama no my throwing technique, which looked to be slightly more advanced than Naruto's own Hiko Yoshin fast draw technique, although Naruto was fairly certain his own throwing technique was a higher level than a nose was. Naruto, your turn. Asuma called out. One jutsu of each element and a demonstration of your fast draw technique please. Gotcha, Asuma sensei, the blonde haired boy smirked. Nothing above C rank, right? Yup. The Jonin smirked back as he lit up a new cigarette. He was very thankful his old man had taught him a chakra trick all those years ago that kept the tar in the tobacco smoke from harming his lungs. It meant that he could indulge in his bad habit and not worry about becoming weaker because of it. Okay then, for my first trick Doden, Gansetsuken Naruto said as he ran through three hand signs, picked a rock up off the ground and made the stone lengthen into a short spear as tall as he was. Whoa instant weapon. Eno blinked. That's only part one. The boy grinned. Here's the more useful version. Once again running through the same three hand signs, 
Naruto turned and stomped onto the ground, forcing a wave of stone spears to erupt from the ground and fly through the air to slam into the trees, shredding one. Holy crap. Sakura balked at the sight. Not bad. Asuma nodded. The cluster was tightly packed enough to be a serious threat, but dispersed just enough to be properly difficult to dodge. You'd have to destroy or block the spears if you aren't quick enough to dodge them. No using that on Asuma Sensei. Ino warned Naruto, who rolled his eyes. As if he'd let himself be hit by them. Jonan, remember, the boy rolled his eyes. Anyway, next up Kaden, Hotarubi. After making the five hand signs for the jutsu, Naruto breathed out a small cloud of fireballs the size of a dice, which quickly flew forward and then abruptly exploded in a chain reaction. Aha! So you mastered it! Asuma said with a smile. Yup. Naruto smirked. Just got it down pat a couple of days before the genin exam. It turned out that the level cap of the D-ranked Kaden Jutsu was 25, and this is what it looked like. Kaden. Hotarubi no Jutsu Active LV25, LV Max Fire Style. Firefly Fires is a D-ranked Jutsu designed to introduce beginners to Kaden Jutsu. After making the hand signs, the user breathes out a stream or cloud of up to hundreds of tiny fireballs about the same size as a dice. Ordinarily a weak jutsu of no threat to anyone of chunin rank or above, the user of this jutsu has mastered it to the degree that he can command the fireballs to explode on command to cause extra damage. Hand signs. Tiger ox monkey boar tiger hair. Range. 5 meters. Number of fireballs created. Randomly between 150 to 500. Damage per mini fireball, normal 55 damage per mini fireball, explosion 220. Costs 50 CP to use, mastery bonus, CP cost halved. It was leagues above how it had been when he first got it. Naruto really wanted to see how Sasuke would stack up with the same jutsu, that's pretty cool. Sakura admitted. Fire isn't one of my elements, but I thought having at least one jutsu from each would be a good idea. Naruto shrugged. The next two jutsu he demonstrated were, Sweden Ninpo, Mizwame Bakuho, and Futon, Kaden Shuriken, which impressed both Ino and Sakura. Asuma made a note to himself to ask if he still had the scroll for the wind-style jutsu. They were so hard to find that even he only had a handful of them at his disposal, and there was absolutely no way he was going to ask the only other primary Futon affinity user in Konoha, Wanshimura Danzo, due to the fact that the man was an old war hawk. Lessons from him would come with string strings that would only increase with time. Asuma was fine learning and experimenting at his own pace, thank you very much. Okay, this is the last ninjutsu that I'm gonna show. Naruto declared as he ran through three hand signs, ending with the rat hand sign. Raiden. Denko Seka. Extending his hands Naruto grinned as lightning crackled around them before four snowflakes of electricity formed around them and fired them across the clearing like shuriken. They smacked into a tree before dissolving into motes of static. That's a pretty unusual jutsu. Asuma commented, tilting his head to the side curiously. It wouldn't be effective at doing serious damage unless it hit the face, but it would be distracting. It isn't as polished as your other jutsu, I notice. Yeah. Raiden isn't one of my elements, and it's pretty much the opposite of Futon, so using it's harder than Sweden or Kaden. Naruto answered with an irritated pout. He'd trained with it and it was still only level 10. All of the other jutsu he'd learned were at least 5 levels higher than it. I don't think I'm going to be learning many Raiden techniques. It's not a bad idea. Leaving off studying the element naturally opposed to your primary is actually pretty common for even ninjutsu experts. Asuma agreed. I only know a handful of Raiden in Sweden myself because of that. I do want you to try to master this jutsu though. You never know when a jutsu can come in handy if everyone, knows, that you don't use a particular element. Sakura and Ino nodded obediently in acknowledgement. Neither of them thought they'd use elemental ninjutsu much though. Sakura was a genjutsu type kunoichi, while Ino used her family's specialized style of ninjutsu to great effect. Neither envisioned themselves using anything like Naruto's little arsenal. Although Asuma's next words made them pout. Regardless of your eventual specialization, I will expect all members of my team to have at least two elemental ninjutsu in their arsenal, just in case. Asuma added before Naruto demonstrated a very practiced and clean Hiko Yoshin fast draw technique, sending two shuriken and two kanai slamming into the same tree that had been the target of his Raiden jutsu. 
Not bad. The Jonan nodded. Okay, now that you all have some idea of each other's skills, you three have half an hour to thrash together a plan to fight me. Other than the fact that you aren't allowed to use jutsu above C rank, anything goes. Traps, jutsu, weapons the lot. Don't hold back. Off you go now. As Asuma wandered off to have a smoke, Sakura frowned. Why would he emphasize the fact that we aren't allowed to use jutsu above C rank? Or Genin, even the best jutsu Naruto showed him was only C rank. Because I do have a couple of B rank jutsu. Naruto admitted honestly. One's a clone jutsu, and the other's a defensive futon jutsu. How? Sakura gopped at him. Wait, cage bunch and no jutsu. That's a B rank. Wow. Waith knows that jutsu. Daddy talked about it once, it's a kinjutsu. Ino stared at Naruto incredulously. It can kill you if you use it too much. How the heck? Not the time. Naruto shook his head. I can also use futon. Fujinheki, a defensive jutsu that I wouldn't use against someone who I know uses kaiden jutsu anyway but what the heck. I also have a, right. I also have a shurikenjutsu technique I can't use either. Every other technique I have can be used, just not those three. Just how many do you know? Sakura demanded. Err, Naruto shrugged nervously. A few. The two kunoichi eyed him before exchanging a glance. Suspicious. They said simultaneously. Can we get to planning already? The blonde boy asked, somewhat desperate to not have to tell the two of them that, including two of the Academy 3 and all of the Traveling 10, he knew 43 jutsu of various types. 11 Doden, 9 Futon, 5 Sweden, 3 Kaden, 2 Raiden and the rest were chakra neutral jutsu. The chakra nagashi no jutsu, he counted as neutral because it depended upon the elemental affinities of the one who used it. Mentally cracking his knuckles as the two girls became serious and nodded at him, Naruto set his mind to his most pressing task yet planning how to land even one solid blow on a janin. Half an hour later. Asuma eyed the three 12-year-old genin standing a distance away from him and going through their last plans with each other. He honestly wondered what the heck they were going to come up with to get to him. Given how Naruto was pretty damn good at those pranks of his the Hokage kept a record of the more outlandish and well-planned ones and had given it to Asuma to look over, several had made Asuma laugh his off the janin knew better than to underestimate him. Add in Sakura's frankly scary, intelligence and knowledge base and Ano's cunning, he was almost certain that he was going to regret not putting any limits other than stopping Naruto from spamming Cage Bunshin to overwhelm him. I really feel sorry for those poor kids who have Kakashi as a Jonin sensei, he mused whimsically. The silver-haired, Cyclopean Jonin was basically going to pee his team no matter what they did due to all three of them being clan heirs, even his status as the hero of the Sharingan, and the last living pupil of the Yandaimi Hokage wouldn't stand up to the backlash of making the last Uchiha and the Inazuka and Aburame heirs flunk back to the academy. Still, he was probably going to put them through hell, even if he couldn't fail them. From what he'd gathered, the Uchiha boy had an ego problem, so he'd likely go along with his usual belt test, which was his prerogative. Asuma still thought that it was a bit much for fresh genin to be expected to, look underneath the underneath, at that age. He knew it had taken Kakashi a few years of active service to learn that particular lesson, despite being a genius, so why he expected kids to do better at 12 he didn't know. Okay you three, time's up, he called as he extinguished his cigarette. Have you managed to pull a plan together? Yup Dadbeo. Naruto declared confidently. Sakura and Ino were less confident than their teammate, but still certain about the fact they had a plan. The looks of determination on their faces were actually somewhat adorable. That's good to hear, Asuma said in amusement. Need any prep time? Ernoi don't think so, Sakura said with an uncertain frown. Naruto. Any trap I could make, even a chunin would be able to detect and destroy in the forest. Naruto shook his head. I'm good at traps in places like the village proper, but less so in forests, only good enough to catch rabbits and the like. Asuma made a note to work on that with him. If they pet his test. Reaching into his pouch, Asuma withdrew a simple timer clock and started fiddling with it. It's two right now. You three have the next four hours to try and land one solid hit on me. You three ready? The genin nodded and took combat stances, ready to move at a moment's notice. All right then start. Asuma said and pressed one final button on the timer before placing it on the ground. 
In an instant, the three genin vanished into the trees. Nice. I was half expecting Naruto to charge at me right from the get-go, but looks like he's done more than train his jutsu over the past year. The Jonin half smirked as he held himself in an easy stance. It would probably take the three a couple of minutes before they would possibly be ready to attack. With a shout, three copies of Naruto charged out of the woods to his left. One ran through several hand signs and shouted, Doden, Dashikuzer before a wave of mud erupted from his feet and flew across the ground towards Asuma, who automatically leapt to the side to avoid it. This led him into the angle of the second Naruto copy, who fired off a Doden, Gansetsuken barrage at him. Futon. Datapa. Asuma intoned, using only one hand sign, Tiger, to invoke the technique. This powered down the technique enough that it didn't smash the clones while still possessing enough power to scatter all of the flying spears. Wait where's the last one? The Jonin wondered, looking around quickly. I can't see it, so below. He leapt back just in time to avoid a large rock shooting out from the ground where he'd been standing seconds before. The Dongan was almost three quarters of Asuma's height, which made him sweat drop. I know I said, don't hold back, and, anything goes, but that's ridiculous, he thought in alarm. Asuma jerked his head to the side as a yell came from his left. Sweden. Yudichi, what had to be the real Naruto shouted. Moments later, eight darts of water formed and swow at Asuma. Futon. Repusho, the Jonin clapped his hands together, sending a gale of wind towards the incoming water darts. Repusho, or Gale Palm, was a fairly underrated c rank futon jutsu that was perfect for deflecting groups of lightweight projectiles like this. Naruto smirked as he finished the next series of hand signs though. Kaden. Hotarubi. He spat out a large stream of small fireballs at Asuma, which just so happened to pee through his repusho, enlarging them by a fair amount. Wide-eyed, Asuma scrambled back to avoid the fireballs, now the size of apples, as they detonated in a rippling wave. Had he been caught in that, even as a jonin, he wouldn't have walked away without at least a minor injury. Dodging again, and wasn't that becoming tiresome. Asuma avoided another Dashikuzer from what he guessed had to be an Iwa Bunshin before he dodged another Dongan from the second clone. As he landed, the Jonin leapt away instantly, just avoiding the soil crumbling beneath him to reveal a pit beneath the thin lid that had concealed it. How the? Must be Doden. Otoshinana. He thought as he fell back. He must have his third clone traveling underground using Doden. Dochu Igyo, Doden, Mogaragakur or Doden, Iwagakur. Where he would learn the last one is beyond me, but it's possible given his weird, gamer, powers. Asuma decided that he'd let the kid have enough for now, it was about time he started fighting back. He couldn't let Naruto have it entirely his own way, after all. Forming the bird hand sign, he fired back. Futon. Kudan. Wind style. Air bullets. He growled before firing off a barrage of compressed air spheres from his mouth, aimed right at the two Iwa Bunshin. They struck them and shattered the rock clones into pieces. Abruptly, he felt something grabbing his feet. Looking down, Asuma saw a couple more Naru clones popped out of the earth and grasping his legs. Struggling, he found it pretty hard to move, they were strong little buggers. Hearing feet move, he looked up and silently swore as he saw Ino setting up to use the Shintenshin no Jutsu. Forcing some chakra into his legs, he broke the grip of the Iwa Bunshin and leapt to the side. The Shintenshin no Jutsu was a very good way to capture a target, but it required the target in question to be immobilized first, as it traveled from the user very slowly. Any kind of serious movement meant it would miss. Shanaru. Sakura roared as she erupted from the ground beneath him, making Asuma's eyes widen in surprise. She drew her fist back and slammed a punch into his side, one that was far more powerful than someone of her build should possibly be capable of. He had instinctively reinforced his body with chakra, so the punch hadn't actually damaged him, but it still hurt like a sonifa. Ha! We did it Dadbeo! Naruto cheered triumphantly as he poked his head out of the ground. When the heck did forehead get so strong? Ino asked, eyes bugged out as Asuma sailed through the air, only to twist an F in midair to land on his feet. Phew, Sakura breathed out slightly before she winced and shook her hand. Oh looks like I still haven't fully mastered the Karata Kyoka no Jutsu yet, considering that's a Chunin level Jutsu, that's not exactly surprising, Missy. Asuma remarked as he walked over to the timer and seated off. 
I must be rustier than I thought if three genin could land a solid blow on me in 15 minutes. Those clones of yours are scarily effective, Naruto. So what if I can't use the standard bunshin? At least the clones that I can use are more useful than a bunch of illusions. The blonde boy grinned. Most of the time Iwa Bunshin are a lot less responsive and quick to obey than yours are. Asuma informed him absently. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Congrats you three. You've ped my test. So as of now we are officially Team 10. Welcome to the Shinobi Forces, kids. The glee on the three young faces make him chuckle. Later kitchen, Naruto's apartment, Amekage apartment's quest complete. The true genin exam. You and your teammates have successfully completed and executed a plan that resulted in him receiving a solid blow. Congratulations on becoming a full-fledged ninja of the leaf, gamer. Quest reward. Confirmation of genin rank, 7500 EXP, 10000 Ryo, Futon. Shinku Taegyoku no Jutsu, scroll, Futon. Hanachiri Mai no Jutsu, scroll. Naruto couldn't wipe the smile off his face as he made some tea for his guest. He was a real ninja now, not just a probationary member. And he had two more futon jutsu to add to his arsenal. This day rocked. Here's your tea, Asuma sensei. He said as he walked back into the living room and gave the cup to his teacher, who had asked to speak to him once he got back from reporting to the Hokage. Thanks, Naruto. Asuma nodded before sipping his tea and hummed. Quote dot. Pretty damn good. Having my cooking skill at level 25 is pretty useful. Naruto said evenly as he sat down and watched as a mix of surprise and skepticism crossed the older man's face for a moment. Right Toyaji told me that you knew I'd know about your ability. The Jonin said carefully. Forgive me for saying so, but it sounds well, plain ludicrous. Try seeing it from my point of view. Naruto laughed. I still have a hard time believing it exists after almost a year of using the thing. It's well, calling it overpowered is an understatement. If even half of what I've been told is true then that's truer than you think. Asuma allowed. Can you offer any proof that it exists? Naruto thought. I could show you my skill learning system. He said after a moment. If you still need convincing after that, I'll invite you into a party like I did with Gigi. Asuma couldn't help but chuckle again at someone referring to his old man so casually. It was a bit jarring, but at the same time it was nice to hear. The Hokage had so very few people to treat him as a person as opposed to the authority figure that most people in the village had known him as for most of their lives. Okay then, let me see what you have in mind. The older man invited. He blinked in surprise when Naruto pulled a scroll out of nowhere. Surreptitiously using a trick to break Genjutsu, Asuma frowned before asking, and what scroll is that? It has, Futon, Shinku Taegyoku no Jutsu, on it. Naruto replied. That's a pretty rare and powerful jutsu. Only one man that I am aware of in Konoha has that jutsushimura danzo. Asuma said grimly. Try to avoid using it where people outside of our team can see it, otherwise Jonin might think he taught you it. I generate a copy of the jutsu scroll whenever I absorb one. Naruto said thoughtfully. I could just say that I found it on a mission once we take one that's outside Konoha. That'll work. Asuma nodded. It was a good excuse, you never knew where you'd find jutsu scrolls when in the field. Without further ado, Naruto pressed something in the air and the scroll he held in his other hand dissolved into motes of blue light which whirled around Naruto's body and then disappeared into his chest. Asuma's jaw gaped open for a moment before he ran through every method of genjutsu dispersal that he could think of. The sight before him didn't change, but he could easily attribute that to some form of space-time ninjutsu. Seeing that in his eyes, Naruto sighed and fed his hand through the air for a moment. Seconds later, a window appeared right in front of Asuma, who jerked back in shock. Party invitation, Uzumaki Naruto has invited you into his party. Except, why, and after once again running through every method of genjutsu dispersal he could think of, Asuma cautiously pressed the, why, key. An instant later and a small window replaced the first, with his name followed by a, a whole slew of numbers. Asuma was more up-to-date with RPGs than his father, so he was better able to grasp what it all meant. This is, he muttered. Check this out too, Asuma sensei. Naruto called an FPED a screen that was in front of him around to face the Jonin. Futon. Shinku Taegyoku no Jutsu, instant, LV1, 0%. Wind style. 
Vacuum Great Sphere, otherwise known as Vacuum Bomb or Vacuum Blast, is a more powerful version of Futon, Shinkugyoku. Unlike the weaker version, the user compresses the air breathed in into a single, large blast of air rather than multiple smaller blasts. The force of a mastered vacuum great sphere is strong enough to crush and shatter concrete and rock as if they were nothing. Hand signs. Tiger, dog. Sphere size, basketball. Range, 10 meters. Damage. INTWIS plus LB of primary futon affinity bludgeoning damage. Chakra cost, 75 CP. Asuma took that in, his mind racing. It didn't just tell Naruto the effects of the jutsu and its effective range, it told him back history and alternate names for the jutsu as well. This was. He looked up and saw Naruto absorb the other scroll and turned the screen around to face him as well. Futon. Hanachiri my no jutsu, instant, continuous, LB1, 0%. Wind style. Flower scattering dance is a wind style technique hailing from unknown origins. Some believe it originated from the Natashiko village, while others argue it comes from Kei's no kuni like many other futon techniques. Regardless of which origin is the real one, this is a highly useful jutsu. The user summons forth a whirling cyclone of wind that the user can direct as they will, allowing them to remain stationary. The user can also control its size and rotation speed, allowing them to switch from offense to defense and back in an instant. Hand signs. Tiger. Hair. Dragon. Range, up to 10 meters away. Standard radius, 11 inches. Maximum radius, 22 inches. Standard rotation speed, 210 RPM. Maximum rotation speed, 420 RPM. Damage, int plus LV of primary futon affinity. Chakra cost, 40 CP to activate, 10 CP to maintain per minute. 5 CP cost to alter rotation speed and radius once active. Asuma's eyebrows rose up even higher in disbelief. It even mentioned such finicky little details as the rumors about the origins of the jutsu and allowed Naruto to control its rotational speed and width. Dear sweet Kami, this was incredible. Asuma said in disbelief. With this gamer ability of yours, you'll be incredibly powerful. Yeah, but it isn't exactly easy. Naruto reminded him. Just like with regular jutsu, I have to put in the work to master any jutsu I learn, and I can only learn 5 jutsu a day by using scroll absorption. The rest I have to learn from trying and failing. Not to mention that they start off weak as hell at level 1. Not so much different from practicing the jutsu to get it right then. Asuma latched onto the last comment. No one gets a jutsu right the first time they use it, Naruto. Sometimes it even blows up in their faces. That happened to me when I was a chunin. I had gone through every aspect of my kaden, heiskasho fire style, ash pile burning, and thought that I had it down pat. Instead, I blew myself up and got slammed first into a tree. Ouch. Naruto winced. Tell me about it. The older man grumbled, taking a deep calming lungful from his cigarette before continuing. Okay, so it's not a straight up instant mastery more of a head start and an ability to quickly learn the basics and a few of the finicky bits. That's, actually a bit worrying honestly. Having to repetitively practice with the jutsu will let you get to know the jutsu you learn and gain practical experience with them, which is just as important as technical knowledge. The limit you have is also good, it'll stop you from simply learning jutsu after jutsu without mastering any. How many jutsu do you have mastered, anyway? Erkawarimi, Henge, The Traveling Ten and Kaden, Hotarubi. Naruto recited. Although Gansetsuken, Dongan, and Kaden Shuriken aren't far off maxing out. That's good. Asuma nodded. Okay, here's my first instructions for you as a Jonin sensei. I want you to finish maxing out those three jutsu and then demonstrate them to me. Then I want you to try and master two more jutsu that are not one of your elemental affinities. Hi, Asuma sensei. Naruto nodded. Oh. I forgot to mention that when I master a jutsu, sometimes I get a, mastery bonus, to go along with it. Kaden. Hotarubi gave me a reduced chakra cost on its use when I mastered it. Blinking, Asuma had to take a moment to process that. That seems very random. It varies. The boy replied with a shrug. Mastering E-ranked jutsu either gives me a quest, AD-ranked jutsu of the same element or a level in AD-ranked jutsu of the same element that I already know. Your gamer power is going to give me headaches, I just know it. 
The Jonin sighed tiredly, leaving Naruto to shrug helplessly. My Raiden Jutsu is one of the ones I'll try to get up, I think. Naruto frowned a moment later. Denko Seka is hard to level up, but I kinda want to see what mastering bonus I get for maxing it out. Given how it's your weakest element, I would be curious to see that as well. Asuma nodded in agreement. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to my apartment for the night. Oh, by the way, the Hokage wants you to report to his office at 9 sharp tomorrow morning. Gigi does. What for? Naruto blinked in surprise as Asuma finished his tea and stood up. He absently dissolved the party as the man stretched. No clue, I'm just the messenger. Asuma shrugged. By the way, have you fixed up all of the apartments here? Yup. It was useful training for my cage bunshin. Naruto nodded. They're all as clean as whistles, they all have basic kitchen appliances and beds just about the only things they don't have is running water or active electricity, and all I need to do is turn them on. Why? I think you're going to get new tenants. Asuma smirked as he left. Naruto blinked for a moment before his higher int and with stats helped him put the pieces together and he facepalmed. Damn it. I'm going to have the bastard in my apartment building. The boy grumbled. And Kiba. I swear if he lets Akamaru piss all over the place, I'll neuter them both. Grumbling, Naruto blinked as a new pop-up appeared. Quest alert. Gotta master them all. Your Jonin sensei, Serutobi Asuma, has issued you with your first individual goals as a genin. Fulfill them to make him respect the gamer system. Quest goal 1. Max out Doden, Gansetsuken, Doden, Dongan and Futon, Kaden Shuriken before reporting to Asuma Sensei. Quest Goal 2. Max out two other elemental jutsu that are not either Doden or Futon. Goal 2 Bonus Objective. Have one of the two jutsu be Raiden, Denko Seka. Quest Goal 1 Rewards. Plus 100 Relationship with Serutobi Asuma, plus 500 Ryo, plus 5000 EXP. Quest Goal 2 Rewards. Plus 500 relationship with Serutobi Asuma, a trip to the library to select your Kodachi and Tonto styles, plus 5000 EXP. Quest 2 Bonus Objective Reward. Plus 500 relationship with Serutobi Asuma, Doden Cage Bunshin, Scroll, Futon, Keis no Yeba no Jutsu, Scroll. This quest cannot be refused and has been auto accepted. Another quest that can't be refused. Naruto hitched an eyebrow at this. Well I guess that you can't exactly say, no, to an order or instruction in the military, so maybe that's why I can't say no to quests given by superiors. A, it's worth thinking about. With that thought, Naruto headed off to cook dinner and then to some fuenjutsu practice before bed. He had a feeling that he'd need the rest for tomorrow. Chapter 22, Landlord Naruto lays down the law. The next day outside of a mechage apartments, sheesh tats a lot of luggage datbeo. Naruto let out a short whistle. There were men from the Hyuga, Yamanaka, Inazuka, Akamichi, Abarame, Nara and Haruno clans out there, sorting out luggage and getting guided to the correct room via one of his shadow clones. Actually, compared to when civilians move on their own it really isn't. Uruka said from next to him. The two were standing on the walkway outside Naruto's own room, simply watching the proceedings. Storage scrolls make moving a lot easier and less cluttered, keeps things down to just a few boxes of scrolls and anything fragile enough that the user doesn't want to risk breaking when it is unsealed. Are all the rooms ready for their new tenants to arrive? Yeah, just turned the water and power on this morning. Even had Gigi give them a once-over before this lot arrived, he gave everything the okay. Naruto answered smugly. The scarred Chunin chuckled. Glad to hear it. You do realize that you're going to have to give a welcoming speech to all of the new tenants, right? Actually, who is moving in here? Sakura-chan, Ino, Shikamaru, Shino, Sasuke, Choji, Ten-chan, Hinata, Hayuga Neji and Rock Lee. Naruto listed off. Aside from Asuma sensei, none of the Jonin sensei are staying here. Well most of them already have their own homes or apartments that they've lived in for years. Uruka pointed out. It's no surprise that they're not upping sticks for this place. I wouldn't want to, I've lived in my house since I was a boy, and I find it a nice, comfortable and relaxing to live in. The draw of the familiar and comfortable is a strong pull, Naruto. Remember that. Hi, Sensei. Naruto nodded. By the way, thanks for stopping by and helping out here. I'd have thought you'd be busy getting ready for the new Academy CL that's gonna start next month. 
Fortunately, I won the luck of the draw this time around. The Chunin sighed in relief that he was out of that mess of fuss and feathers for once. Hokage Samas tapped me to act as supervising administrator for newest batch of Genin. I'll basically be helping your instructors make sure all of the bureaucratic and administrative stuff like accepting and reporting missions is done accurately for your first year as Genin. It makes things go a bit smoother until you all get some experience in handling the day-to-day -day minutia of being actual shinobi. I'm not looking forward to the D ranks. The Jinchuriki grumbled. Ten Chan's told that they're basically people paying us to do chores. You have to get your feet wet somehow. Uruka responded sternly. D ranks are no risk missions that you and your teammates can complete while still leaving you plenty of time to train and advance your abilities under your sensei. You all need a lot more experience and some actual combat training before you're ready for even a low C rank. Even tracking down bandit lairs or guarding caravans isn't an easy job. Be patient and accrue experience and you'll do fine. I do get experience in a very literal sense, Uruka sensei Naruto sweat dropped. Thanks to the gamer, I'm a walking RPG character. It doesn't make the idea of doing missions that are just chores dressed up prettily any less boring. He groused aloud. Look at it as a training exercise, Naruto. Uruka advised wisely. I'll admit, I thought much as you did back when I first became a genin, but I found a way to make the dull D ranks work for me, I used them to train my ninjutsu. Take painting fences, a pretty common D rank mission. I adapted Sweden ninjutsu to paint the fences instead of using brushes or rollers. For walking the Inazuka clan's dogs, I used it as a chance to get some good running practice in. Adapt to the circumstances and you'll see that all sorts of ninja skills can be trained by using the D ranks. A. How do you get a Sweden jutsu to work with paint? Naruto blinked in surprise. From what little he knew about water release techniques they were primarily designed to work with, well, water. He'd hear of a couple designed to work with oil and other liquids, but they had to be specifically designed to work with something other than water. Well, my Jonan sensei was a Sweden expert, so he naturally knew and used a variety of techniques and tried to pee on some of his skills to us. The scarred Chunin said with a thoughtful look on his face. One that he made sure to teach all of us was Sweden. Sweden Swima no Jutsu, water style, water army water demon. It's a low C rank Jutsu that allows the user to either manipulate pre-existing water or create water to fire a short ranged stream of water. It was actually designed to be used primarily for fire fighting, but it's easy to adapt for other uses. The hand signs are normally boar, dog, horse, and tiger, but my sensei told me that by swapping out the boar hand sign for the bird hand sign, it makes the jutsu focus less on water, and more on simply, liquids, in general instead. You have to be careful that you don't grab any other liquids nearby like puddles or even mud when you use it, but otherwise it makes painting a lot quicker and more efficient and it's great practice for Sweden ninjutsu. I'll definitely have to look into that jutsu. Naruto swore. No way was he going to get stuck doing boring painting all day for some spending money. I'll look forward to you mastering it. Uruka said in amusement before remembering something. I did stop by for something other than checking in and offering moral support, Naruto. Here, this is for you. Reaching into his pouch, the Chunin sensei withdrew a couple of scrolls and handed them to his former student. A. Hey, what are these, Uruka sensei, the blonde boy asked. The first scroll contains all of Mizuki's ninja gear, minus his flak vest and hitai 8. Uruka informed him seriously. All of his possessions were thoroughly checked over before being cleared to be awarded to you, Naruto. That's about 400 regular shuriken and kanai, a dozen of his dai shuriken, several reels of ninja wire, a couple of stacks of explosive notes and six scrolls containing various ninjutsu and genjutsu. The genjutsu might be a bit tough for you, but maybe Sakura and Ino can make use of them. Cool. Naruto said enthusiastically. And the other scroll mostly furniture and the like that mizuki owned he kept his parents house which is being auctioned as we speak Uruka said the funds will be given to you once that's finished i know you don't really need the furniture but you could use them as emergency backups in case something happens to the stuff you already have in the building maybe awesome that'll save me money with the furniture shops naruto cheered even with the hokage breathing down their necks some of the shops in Konoha were still reluctant to sell him anything, with some of them still trying to overcharge or price gouge him whenever they got an opportunity. 
glad Mizuki was good for something. Uruka muttered. He was still horrified that his friend could have done something as blatant as trying to betray Konoha. Not to mention trying to frame Naruto for his own crime. He was going to need a stiff drink tonight if he didn't want to be kept up by his own thoughts. Luckily a distraction arrived to pull Uruka away from that sour line of thought. Looks like your new tenants are waiting for you, Naruto. He commented, nodding towards where eight new genin, and three older genin, stood at the front of his building. You'd better go off and get down to business, Landlord Uzumaki. Hey he 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 right. Naruto chuckled nervously. This is gonna be tough, nothing worth doing is ever easy. Haruka advised him before messing with his former student's hair again, making Naruto swat at him peevishly. Now I do have to go. Meet me at Ikiraku's after work and I'll treat you to a bowl. You got it Databato. Naruto cheered. He was in no way stupid enough to turn down a free bowl of his personal food of the gods, no sir. The fact it gave him some motivation to deal with his former CLMates slash new tenants was a big bonus. Spinning the scrolls into a pair of slots in his utility belt, Naruto headed over to meet the newest people to live in the Amekage apartments. Yo, how's it going, he asked cheerfully. Hey Naruto. Tenten greeted him with a warm smile. Pretty nice place the Hokages set up, isn't it? Yup. And I'm the landlord, believe it or not. Naruto said with a chuckle. Tenten already knew that, as did Sakura, but for the rest it was pretty shocking news. Wait, how the hell is this your place? Kiba demanded in disbelief. Last I heard, you rented that shitty apartment near the dead district. I got turfed out thanks to a group of people breaking in and wrecking the place. Naruto answered with a helpless shrug. Gigi set me up with this place and made me the landlord. Any other questions before I give you all a rundown on the basics? There were none, so Naruto gave the speech he'd been readying since he'd found out he would have his CLMates as his tenants. Okay, so, you are now all tenants of the Amekage apartments. Most of you know me, but for those who don't, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, the landlord here. He said easily, thankful that his gamer's mind kept him cool, common in control in this kind of situation. For those of you with clans, your apartments have been paid for in advance for the first month. This leaves you with enough time to save up money from your mission pay and standard pay. For those without clans and families, the Hokage himself has paid for that first month as a gift for all of you gaining the rank of Genin, even those of you who have been in the Shinobi forces for a year. I'm a Genin too, so I won't be in the building all of the time, but I'll be keeping at least one shadow clone here at all times so just let them know if you need anything and they'll let me know. As much as I'd like to say, do whatever, in your rooms, there are rules. Break furniture and you have to pay for it. You all have to at least keep your room sanitary enough to not pose a health risk, if you don't you get charged extra for the cleaning service. The blonde boy continued. You also have to keep your pets from doing their business inside. Arf. Akamaru barked in protest of the possible slight against his house training. I know that you know better, Akamaru, but these guys might get pets of their own at some point and they won't be Ninkin smart. Naruto defended himself. With a small snort, the Ninkin pup accepted that excuse. Now, on to facilities. There's a taijutsu sparring room on each floor, with a shuriken range and ranged jutsu practice area in the basement. Naruto started to relax when he noticed everyone was actually paying attention. It's sanctioned for anything up to mid-C rank, anything higher rank you'll need to find a training ground to use unless you wanna risk bringing the building down on all our heads. You've all got free access to all the facilities except for the utilities area, all of which are clearly marked, and the second floor of the basement, the piping and other such is down there. This is for your safety and the Hokage's peace of mind. Okay then any questions? How do we pay you our rent? Choji asked. You can either set up an automatic transfer of fund from your bank account to mine, or you can just pay in person. Naruto answered. Whichever way you want is fine, but I'd prefer cash in hand. Anything else? Yash. How much is our rent? The mini guy that was Rockley asked. One brow twitching at the huge eyebrows being wiggled in his direction, Naruto took a moment to take in the older boy's words. Wait, that should have been on the forms you all got. It's 1500 Rio per month, utilities not included. A fair price. Shino nodded. The amount was missing from the form my parents handed to me. I suspect the same was true for everyone else present. A murmur of agreement came up from everyone present. 
Who he'll have to let Gigi know about that? Naruto frowned. Do you all at least know what apartment you've been ignorant? Fortunately, they all did. As they wandered off to unpack and get settled in their respective apartments, Naruto heaved a sigh and headed up to his own apartment. He wanted to double check everything he'd gotten from Mizuki to make sure it was all in working order. And of course, he wanted to have a look at whatever jutsu were in the traitorous Chunin scrolls. Thankfully, he was left alone by the various people wandering about his building, some of whom were almost certainly Anbu in disguise, his Gigi had told him that security here would be taken seriously and that a lot of the movers for the small clan and non-clan members of the graduating CL would be there to ensure things didn't get unnecessarily messy, as the old Hokage put it. By that, Naruto Yumen, he meant people placing monitoring seals where they weren't supposed to be. As the former Anbu HQ, the Amekage apartments had subtle and discreet monitoring seals emplaced in its corridors that would alert the one bound to them, and Anbu, if someone was wondering where they weren't supposed to be. Having some sloppy idiot putting up a half-arsed seal nearby would not be a good idea. Settling into one of his chairs, Naruto removed the scroll that had the jutsu sealed into it and rolled it out so he could specifically unseal them. A puff of chakra smoke later and he had six scrolls in his lap, making multiple windows pop up. You have acquired the genjutsu. Moya Moya jutsu scroll, you cannot learn this jutsu. Requirements. Skill. Average chakra control, you have acquired the doden. Dochu Igyo no jutsu scroll, do you wish to learn this jutsu? Y, N, you have acquired the genjutsu. Kasumi jutsu scroll, you cannot learn this jutsu. Requirements. Skill. Average chakra control, you have acquired the doden. Doryuheiki no jutsu scroll, do you wish to learn this jutsu? Y, N, you have acquired the doden. Shinju Zanshu no jutsu scroll, do you wish to learn this jutsu? Y, N, you have acquired the kaiden. Kangakur no jutsu scroll, do you wish to learn this jutsu? Y, N. Husso there were two genjutsu and four ninjutsu in the mix. That was a bit disappointing, but he was sure that either Sakura-chan or Ino could make use of them, which meant they wouldn't go to waste at least. Setting those scrolls to the side and dismissing their screens, Naruto rapidly hit, Y, on the four others. You have successfully learned Doden, Dochu Igyo. Doden, Dochu Igyo no Jutsu, active, LV1, 0%. Earth style. Underground projection fish jutsu is a standard C-rank earth element jutsu that allows its user to sink into the earth and swim through it like a fish. When emerging from the earth, the user emerges totally silently and without disturbing the ground around or beneath them. Due to its utility for both stealth and combat applications, this jutsu is commonly known throughout the entirety of the ninja world. Hand signs. Dog boar snake bird. Underground travel speed. Babies crawl costs 30 cp to activate and 5 cp minute to maintain you have successfully learned doden doryuheiki doden doryuheiki no jutsu active lv1 zero percent earth style earth style wall is one of the elemental wall techniques alongside futon fujinheki kaden karyuheiki and sweden sujinheki using it the user can summon a defensive wall of mud earth or rock in front of them to act as a shield while it is possible for the user to create earth and or mud from their own chakra instead of manipulating pre-existing mud and earth, it is not advised unless the user is at least John in rank and possesses a significant amount of experience with the technique. A skilled user of this jutsu can create a wall with a personalized design on it rather than a plain wall of stone or mud. Hand signs. Tiger hair boar dog. Durability points when created. 75 costs 50 CP to create. You have successfully learned Doden, Shinju Zanshu. Doden, Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Instant, LV1, 0%. Earth Style. Double Suicide Decapitation Jutsu, sometimes referred to as the Earth Style. Headhunter Jutsu, is a very old jutsu created to quickly incapacitate more powerful or heavily armored opponents from ambush. At its core, it is a very simple technique that is easy to execute and is very useful for AD rank jutsu. The user lurks underground and drags their target down into the ground up to their neck, whereupon the user can resurface and kill and or torture their target with impunity. It should be noted that given sufficient time or enough pure brute strength, the target cannon will escape from this technique. Hand signs. None, when used, the user must be underground and their target must step within arm's reach of them. 
When the target is dragged into the earth, they are bound with bindings with a DP of 30. Should that DP be expended, they shall be able to remove themselves from their prison. Costs 30 CP to use. You have successfully learned Kaden, Kangaker. Kaden, Kangaker no Jutsu, active, LB1, 0%. Fire style. Hiding in fire jutsu is a fairly unusual concealment technique whereby the user is able to shroud themselves in chakra and hide within a nearby lit fire. Upon reappearing, it appears as if the user emerges from fire. Other rarer examples of concealment techniques would be Shimogakur no Jutsu, Gamagakur no Jutsu, Hayamengakur no Jutsu and Nunogakur no Jutsu. Hand Signs. Tiger Boar Snake Monkey. The user can only hide in fire of a certain size and above. The higher this Jutsu's level is, the smaller the flame that the user can hide in. Current Size. Bonfire. Costs 95 CP to activate and 10 CP minute to maintain. Yao. Naruto hiss out as he raised a hand to rub his throbbing head, the sudden influx of so much information was enough to actually hurt. Damn it, he couldn't catch a break, could he? Anyway, all of the jutsu looked pretty useful, with the possible exception of the Kangakur no jutsu, simply because of how Variwats the kinda words Aruka sensei would use. Ah yes situational. It was a very situational jutsu, as fires were fairly uncommon in most places ninja were likely to go, with a few exceptions. Still, maybe if he got it to a high enough level it would be more useful, he'd practice with it and see. You never know when you might need a jutsu like that, after all. Ding. It's a landlord's life, congratulations. You now have more than one tenant. With this condition cleared, the landlord system has been unlocked for your usage. You must be both tough and fair as landlord, balancing the legitimate complaints, concerns and problems of your tenants with your own needs and the priorities of your building as a whole. It is a tough balancing act, but you can consider it basic training for when you become Hokage. Landlord system unlocked. Tenant mood gauge unlocked. Building condition page unlocked. Rent monitoring system unlocked. Fing through the newly unlocked pages, Naruto had to whistle. At the moment, aside from Asuma Sensei, all of the tenant gauges were at neutral. They were neither impressed nor dissatisfied with his actions as a landlord. Quite unsurprising as he'd only been their landlord for less than an hour. Asuma was at satisfied, which was nice. There hadn't been many problems that Naruto had needed to fix, and what few he'd needed to sort out had been basic maintenance on a few of the training rooms. The building condition page was rather informative. It showed a blueprint of the building and highlighted areas as green, yellow or red depending on their condition, according to a useful little legend that he had in one corner. Most of the building was a solid green color, with parts of it marked in yellow that he made a note of on a scroll to get his Gigi to send someone to look into them. While Naruto was called the landlord, he was technically only the landlord's representative. Once Naruto became a chunin, something he was definitely going to work towards, the Hokage was planning on transferring the ownership rights fully to him and then he'd be a proper landlord. Until then, the Hokage had to personally sign off on most work requiring hired help around the building. As for the rent monitoring system, it was all in the green, with a countdown timer to when the next payment of rent was due from each tenant. So very useful. I should go and see how everyone's doing. Naruto decided once he'd finished reading the new screens he could access. It was pretty obvious that there would be tensions between the genin, both new and old, especially since they weren't used to being around each other in a private setting for a long period of time. No sooner had he stepped outside of his apartment than the sound of yelling was audible. In his head slightly, Naruto guessed it was between Kiba and Dino. What the heck was going on now to have those two at loggerheads with one another? Jogging down the stairs to where Kiba's room was on the ground floor, Naruto frowned as he wondered why Ino was down here when her room was on the first floor, like the rest of the girls were. Your trash all over me. Ino shouted as Naruto reached the bottom of the stairs. Screw you. Kiba growled back. The two of them were practically nose to nose in front of Kiba's room, with a lot of dreck, mostly dog treats and sticks, all over the floor, with some on a nose clothes and hair. Most of the other residents of the building were also present, looking on as the two shouted at one another. Do I want to know what this is about? The blonde landlord asked the corridor at large with a sigh. Kate Kiba Kun accidentally spilled some of his S stuff on Ino-san. Hanada managed to get out. 
The Bluenet poked her pointer fingers together as she spoke, clearly nervous. Eno San didn't appreciate I it. So I can see. Thanks for the sitrep, Hinata. Naruto said with a smile that made the Hyuga Hyres face redden into the same hue as a tomato. Okay, calm the hell down, both of you, the blonde boy said loudly as he stepped between the two shouting Genin and pushing them apart. Seriously, you've both been here for less than an hour and you're already fighting like cats and dogs. Back off, Dobi, this isn't your business. Kiba snarled. I'm the landlord and you're causing a fuss in my building. That makes it my business. Naruto swow back. Let's get something straight. Kiba, in this building, I'm the alpha, get it. As Kiba blinked in surprise, Naruto mentally patted himself on the back. Doing a bit of research about the Inazuka clan had paid off. Kiba was an alpha, someone who was supposed to lead inside the Inazuka clan, a trait they picked up from their long oceation with their Ninkan companions. Kiba bowed to his mother, who was the dominant alpha of the Inazuka clan. He bowed to Jonan and Chunin because they legitimately outranked him in the, greater pack, that was Konoha. He had never felt that Naruto outranked him and probably considered himself to be Naruto's superior. That being the case. Yeah right, Dobi. Kiba snorted, proving Naruto right. Landlord, maybe, but no way are you an alpha. Fine then. You and me in that training room over there. Naruto jerked his head towards the ground floor training room nearby. Winner's the best two out of three. I win, you accept my position and stop acting like a jerk in the building. I lose, you can do as you please. You seriously think you can beat me? The Inazuka air growled, exposing his teeth in an attempt at intimidation. I came second in our CL in Taijutsu, you were barely the middle. What happens in the academy stays in the academy, dog boy. Naruto retorted. Welcome to the real world, where little rankings like that don't really matter anymore. He noticed Sakura look slightly annoyed for a moment before she shrugged. Ha. Huh. Fine, have it your way. Kiba sneered. Sure, if you win, you're the alpha of this place. Not like it'll happen. No Akamaru to help you out, Kibble. Naruto prodded. To take care of you, I don't need him. The other boy growled. Let's get this sorted out already. Shrugging, Naruto led the way to the training room, which was up to date and looked as if it had been transplanted from the academy's indoor taijutsu sparring area. Then the pop-up appeared. Quest alert. Proving who's top dog. Inazuka Kiba is in serious need of an attitude adjustment and you have challenged him to a taijutsu spar in order to force him to acknowledge your position as landlord. Quest objective. Defeat Inazuka Kiba. Bonus objective. Defeat Inazuka Kiba while using Ninpo. Kitsunarisu no Bincho. Quest reward. Plus 100 reputation with Inazuka Kiba, plus 500 Ryo, random kimono clan jutsu scroll. Bonus quest reward. Rogakan, jutsu scroll, plus 500 Ryo, rarity system unlocked. Quest failure. A serious amount of emberment. Quest has automatically been accepted. That was rather interesting. A rarity system. Naruto guessed that it had to do with weapons, armor, clothes and jutsu scrolls. It would be interesting to see how this played out. But first. Hey, Lee. Naruto called out to the taijutsu specialist. You referee this. Yosha. I shall put my most youthful efforts toward it. Uzumaki-san, the boy declared with a raised clenched fist. Wah. Both Naruto and Kiba blinked at his unusual usage of the term, youthful. Just let it go, he takes after Guy sensei way too much. Tenten called. Shrugging, Naruto moved to a few feet opposite Kiba and Yumed the standard ready position of Hakage Taijutsu. Kiba would likely use his family's Taijutsu techniques, especially the Nin Taijutsu portion. He was very predictable that way, always charging in head first at full strength. And, sure enough, ready begin. Lee announced. Giju Ninpo, Shikyaku no Jutsu. Imitation Beast Ninja Art, Four Legs Jutsu. Kiba snarled, his stance becoming stooped and feral as the technique took a hold of him. Then he rushed at Naruto at a greater speed than he could normally manage, swiping with his clawed hands. Naruto blocked one, dodged another and redirected a third, backing up slightly as he focused entirely on defense. Kiba, frustrated that he was apparently being played with by his opponent, used a reverse scissor strike to force Naruto's arms to splay open before trying to drive a fist into his gut, only to be blocked by a raised knee. 
What? He managed to exclaim before the foot attached to that knee snapped out and slammed into his side painfully, forcing him back a step. Then Naruto went on the attack, driving punches and kicks into the Inazuka before grabbing his arm and executing a very precise throw that left Kiba sprawled on his back, gasping for breath. First round goes to Naruto-kun. Lee bellowed, making Kiba wince and cover his ears. Lee. Inside voice. Tenten scolded him. Sorry, Tenten-san. Scrambling to his feet after he got his breath back, Kiba glared at Naruto angrily. He might have underestimated him then, but now he'd show that Dobihu was boss. Let's start again, he snarled. Naruto simply yumed the defensive stance he'd taken before again and fed two fingers at him, as if to say, bring it, to his opponent. Naturally, Kiba saw red. Why you take this, he shouted, barely waiting for Rock Lee to begin the fight. Suga. Ping Fang. Leaping off of the ground, the boy span around into a drill that left forward towards Naruto, who jumped to the side, allowing his enemy to pee by his former position. The Suga was the single-person version of the Gatsuga, a combination jutsu involving an Inazuka's Ninkan. Because only one being was involved, the technique suffered an accordingly large power drop. It was something that Kiba had obviously not trained in as much as the Gatsuga, otherwise Naruto wouldn't have been able to avoid it like that. Humph. This is a poor showing by both sides. Hayuga Neji jeered. I don't know what match you're watching, but Naruto just kicked Kiba's while using the basic hawkage style of the academy. Tenten deadpanned. He teammate could be such and sometimes. He has to have mastered the hawkage style, at least the basic and intermediate versions, in order to do that. Outwardly ignoring his kunoichi teammate's words, Neji narrowed his eyes at Naruto as the blonde dodged another Suga. What Tenten had said was very true. Mastery of the basic and intermediate styles of the Hakage style was without doubt a requirement to manhandle Inazuka Kiba in such a manner. However, Neji was an expert at reading people's movements due to his prodigious talent at the art of Jukan, gentle fist, and he could see some definite traces of the advanced style of Hakage in the blonde boy's movements. It matters not. Fate has declared him to lose. The arrogant boy thought dismissively. Sure enough, Naruto was knocked down by Kiba seconds later, albeit by a hair's breadth. Second round to Kiba-kun. Lee declared. Ha. How'd you like that, Dobi? Kiba crowed. Naruto fped himself back to his feet and stretched himself slightly. Okay, I think it's time to stop playing around. He said before making the tiger, horse and monkey hand signs. Ninpo. Kitsunarisu no Bincho. At his words, the boy crouched forward, a faint sheen of chakra outlining his body as it stretched and his limbs audibly popped. After a moment of silent staring, Naruto swallowed Lee an expectant look, oh. The boy shook himself. Final round, begin. Naruto seemed to teleport across the room and start launching quick barrage of punches of fairly powerful punch directly at Kiba, who was desperately blocking them and backing up at the same time. Huha speed oriented version of the Shikyaku no Jutsu. Tenten muttered, interested. What what the heck is with this? Kiba thought as he was forced to retreat yet again. Naruto hadn't shown this kind of skill in the academy. Even if he'd given Mizuki Sensei a hard time in the Taijutsu test, he hadn't been nearly this fast. He was the Inazuka clan heir. He was an alpha. There was no way that he could lose to the likes of Naruto. Suga. He roared desperately and tried to spin into the drill of his technique. Before he could though, Naruto's hands swow out and grabbed him by the wrists and threw him onto his back yet again. Yash. The final round goes to Naruto-kun. Rock Lee declared, in awe of the most youthful taijutsu match he'd just refereed. He couldn't wait to tell Guy sensei about it. Kiba looked up at the ceiling in utter defeat. He'd lost. Not only that, he'd lost so obviously that all of his anger had fled him. Damn Naruto really kicked my butt, he thought wryly. You okay, Kiba? Naruto asked. Looking up, the Inazuka heir saw his former opponent standing above him. Rolling over and standing up, Kiba winced at the ache in his arms. Naruto hit as hard as his sister did, which was pretty damn good considering Hana was a chunin, even if she was primarily the Inazuka clan's vet. Yeah, I'm good, Kiba said ruefully. Damn, you hit like an out of control cart. You've been holding back in spars at the academy. Maybe a little. Naruto grinned. Always keep an ace up your sleeve for when you need it. You need to practice your suga more. I shouldn't have been able to dodge you at that distance. 
Yeah, yeah, Yashish, you're nagging me just like Ka-san. Kiba grumbled as Akamaru leapt back into his arms. You won, and I keep to my word. You're the alpha of these apartments. Good. Naruto nodded before turning to the other person who had been arguing. Ino, what were you doing on the ground floor? I was gonna look in on Shikamaru to make sure he didn't just unpack his futon and go to sleep. The Yamanaka heiress huffed. Troublesome girl. The black-haired boy muttered. What was that? Ino roared at her childhood friend. Inside voice, Ino. Naruto winced alongside most of the others. Kiba, apologize to Ino for getting her dirty and try not to wander around with Drek loose in your arms in future. They were Akamaru's things. Kiba grumbled before begrudgingly apologizing to Ino, who accepted it and stormed off to have a shower and change clothes. Shooing everyone else off now that the spectacle was over with, Naruto returned to his apartment and started to pay attention to the pop-up that had appeared once Kiba admitted his loss. Quest complete. Proving who's top dog. Inazuka Kiba was in serious need of an attitude adjustment and you have soundly defeated him, earning his respect in the process. Well done. Quest reward. Plus 100 reputation with Inazuka Kiba plus 5000 Ryo, Ninpo, Sino Kawa, Jutsu Scroll. Bonus quest reward. Rogakan, Jutsu Scroll, plus 5000 Ryo, Rarity System Unlocked. Congratulations. Your relationship with Inazuka Kiba has advanced to friendly. Pleased with his achievement, Naruto focused on the two jutsu he'd earned. Skin of the Rhino, and, Wolf Fang Fist, A. Eh? Both of them sounded cool, but Naruto was more tempted by the more offensive sounding one. Unfortunately, you cannot learn, Rogakan, as you do not meet the requisite jutsu or skill levels to do so. Required jutsu, skills. Ninpo, Kitsunarisu no Bincho LV20, any, one, other jutsu of the Kimono clan at LV20. Well that s. Naruto grumbled. He only had Kitsunarisu no Bincho, at level 5 because he rarely used it, which had come back to bite him on the right now. That really left only one choice for him to learn. Congratulations. You have successfully learned, Ninpo, Sai no Kawa. Ninpo, Sai no Kawa, active, LV1, 0%. Ninja Art. Rhino Skin is a defensive jutsu of the Kimono clan, designed to protect the user from weak and non-chakra-based attacks from simple threats like normal wild animals, bandits, and thugs so the user can either quickly plow through them or focus on more dangerous threats. The user's skin uses the defensive traits of a rhino to repel weaponry and taijutsu attacks. A basic level D-ranked jutsu for genin-ranked members of the Kimono clan. Hand Signs. Monkey Horse Snake Ox. Grants all of the user's skin natural armor of 5 while active. Lowers dex by 10 while active. Costs 40 CP to activate and 5 CP per minute to maintain. Huh not bad. Naruto blinked. Kind is the opposite of what Kitsunarisu no Bincho does, slowing me down and improving my defenses. Hopefully that dex reduction will go away as I level it up. Getting up. He moved to the kitchen and inspected the cupboards, he'd have to do some shopping in the next couple of days, but he was good for tonight at least. Returning to his seat, he opened the pop-up about the new system that had been unlocked by his victory. Rarity system, all items in the world will be ranked by their rarity from here on out. The rarer an item, the more valuable it is. Weapons, armor, regular items and jutsu scrolls are just some of the things that this system affects. Be warned however that simply because an item is rare does not always equate to powerful or useful. There are several tiers of rarity. Trash, this tier includes broken, rusted and abandoned items. A legendary item that has been poorly maintained or abandoned will eventually degrade to this tier. Some might be fixable if you have a craftsman of appropriate skill level to do so. Common, this tier involves items that are frequent sites in the world including disposable weaponry such as kanai and shuriken, as well as basic clothing and e-ranked jutsu scrolls. Uncommon, this tier is a slight step up from common, with the items being slightly less a frequent sight in basic society. This includes kanai swords, katana, chikudo, ninjutu, d-ranked jutsu scrolls and certain types of body armor. Rare, this tier involves items that are hard to find even among the various countries of the elemental nations. These can include Zanbato, certain country-restricted jutsu scrolls and other items. 
super rare even rarer than rare items these are usually items made by master craftsmen in very limited quantities usually no more than a dozen or so note that a master crafted item is not automatically super rare legendary the highest tier attainable as of this update legendary items are usually one of a kind items used worn or carried by legendary figures in famous battles a few examples would be the Seven Swords of the Mist, the Necklace of the Shodaim Hokage, several summoning contracts and other items of this sort. Who he wonder, Naruto muttered. He opened his inventory and checked his weapons for their rarity. Tsubaki and Sumire were both rated as uncommon, as was that Konoha Chakra Blade he'd gotten immediately after the second system update. Kogetsu Kyushiki, on the other hand, was the only rare weapon that he had. The Storm Suit, which was going to be his C rank and up uniform, was also rare which was interesting. Most of his other items, weapons and clothing were either common, or uncommon, which was to be expected considering he was only a genin. Jutsu scroll wise, he was amused to see that all of the Futon Jutsu scrolls were rated as being rare, which made sense. Out of all of the five basic elements, the wind element was the rarest of them all, making most jutsu for that element fairly hard to come by. Aside from jutsu for Keke Jenke, that is. Tomorrow's my first day as a genin taking missions he'd better go out and see about learning that Sweden jutsu that Aruka sensei told me about. The Jinchuriki thought with a slight frown. Knowing my luck, painting fences will be one of the missions Asuma sensei makes us do. After making sure he had everything he needed, Naruto headed out to the back of the Amekage apartments, which had its own back garden, including a modest pond. It was here that he tried his luck at learning Sweden, Swigen Swima. The first few times were less than successful, getting him soaked as the water just seemed to swamp him in a sort of aborted wave, which ed. Undeterred, he kept trying. Eventually, after what he'd estimated to have been his 20th or 30th go at it. Congratulations. You have successfully learned, Sweden, Swigen Swima no Jutsu. Sweden, Swigen Swima no Jutsu, Instant Active, LV1. 0%. Water Style. Water Army Water Demon, otherwise known as Water Style, Marine Battle Formation, is high D-ranked Jutsu that borders on low C rank. It allows the user to manipulate a large amount of water into a powerful, spiraling stream that can be directed and manipulated by the user to strike its target from a multitude of different angles. While it is mostly used to act as an impromptu fire service jutsu in an emergency nowadays, its utility in battle cannot be understated. Two people executing the jutsu at once can double the effectiveness of the technique so long as they act in concert. Hand signs. Boar dog horse tiger. Range. Up to 5 meters away. Requires pre-existing source of water to be used. Volume of water controllable. Bucket full. Deals intwis 50 water damage to targets. Costs 50 CP to use and 10 CP per minute to maintain. If used by two people in concert, double the amount of water manipulated and the damage dealt by the highest leveled user. Cool. Naruto grinned before his stomach rumbled. Better get some lunch in me, it's past the time of day. Chuckling, the blonde boy headed back in to get started on his lunch and then practice his fuenjutsu. This would be the last day he'd have the luxury of lounging around like this, after all, he'd be on duty as a member of Kanaha's shinobi forces starting tomorrow. He couldn't wait. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author. See you guys in the next video. Peace.